What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beale. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been, from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading and much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass, enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beal. Greetings, Earthlings. This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net. Welcome you, you to another episode of Col Celestial Compass. Uh, we have reached the biggest action of the year. Um, I'm recording this in April. You will be seeing it in April. Um, this is the month where everything finally takes off. If you think things have been chaotic or hectic, it's not going to slow down at all. It's only going to get even more so. And the two big events of the year occur uh, at the beginning and at the end of the month. The, we have a solar eclipse that everybody has heard very, very much about in the sign of Aries, conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, bringing up all kinds of issues of aggression and masculinity, toxic masculinity especially, uh, and how we push ourselves out into the world. This is a new phase in agreements and relationships, and everyone is going to be what we used to refer to as a human cannonball. It'll be as if everybody gets their own little booster rocket and it will shoot far ahead and uh, not worrying so much about what other people are doing. The ones that you're going to be with will catch up. They're on their own parallel journeys right now. The second really, really big event occurs on the 20th or the 21st, depending on where you are on the planet. And that is the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus. Jupiter expands everything in the sign of resources, a uh, tangible experience of life, creature comforts, money, uh, and it's meeting with Uranus, the cosmic agent of unexpected change, sudden change, uh, massive insights and epiphanies and breaks and lightning bolts, bigger and bigger and bigger. Don't even try to spend, don't waste any time trying to figure out the specifics of how this is going to play out. Although your life has been tingling since last summer with in the area where this is going to hit. And people always say, is this a good thing or a bad thing? It's a thing. It is there. Since Jupiter is involved, it could be completely over the top, but ultimately to your benefit. Keep that in mind. And again, things are not going to settle down for a while. So pace yourself. Know that you're in a, uh, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, but it's at the pace of a sprint. So allow yourself downtime. Be very kind to yourself. And oh yes, Mercury is going retrograde. Also note this in the same sign as the eclipse. So uh, hot headedness could be uh, a real epidemic. Give yourself time to stop and think it will not be your natural inclination. And for a lot more on this, look at my forecasts at my site, empowermentunlimited.net and Ohm Times. Also, I have a Mercury retrograde guided Ohm Times as well. And today's show will is going to explore some ideas that are going to help you with all this. And I'm very happy to welcome today... Alexandra Zorganich, who is probably known to not a whole lot of you. Uh, she is a pioneer of intuition training in Germany. Uh, she's a teacher and a mentor of more than 20 years and founded the Institute for Intuition Training in Cologne, Germany in 2007, which has now expanded to international and online programs uh, ongoing since 2019. She's also a 
filmmaker, an author, and an entrepreneur whose career has taken her from the Arctic to Antarctica and every continent in between. And she's also now the author of a book being released this month in German, in Germany, uh, with the title translating to Intuition, uh, How to Strengthen Your Soul's Voice and Use It for a Free and Self-Determined Life. Um, welcome, Alexandra. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Casey. Hello, and thank you for having me. Well, I, I we've had conversations, so people know. We have had conversations before, and um, it intrigued me that, first off, that this that this book exists, and after I read it, it, it drove home that there has been a different approach uh, in the European community, and particularly in Germany, which is where your background is, uh, to the whole concept of intuition that what we're used to thinking about here in uh, the United States. And I noticed that I'd like to start with your own awakening to mm -hmm. this faculty. And you, you write a lot about childhood experiences. Can you yeah. tell mm -hmm. us about how you became aware that there was something going on for you? Yeah, you know, like when I was a child, I wouldn't question my um, experience or my perception. I would see beings everywhere. I would talk to beings. I would see people that are about to die. I would knew that they would die soon. I would um, see people's feelings. I would see trauma. I would see, um, yeah, maybe also masks, like what people would more be likely to hide <laughs> you know but that was normal to me i i did learn very quickly that it would be better to not talk about it so i did learn that but i when i was young i couldn't um uh, connect it to awareness i was just i was thinking there was something wrong with me <laughs> like when i was young so i learned it um when i was studying in berlin uh, studying film and I had my first aura reading, I learned, oh my gosh, there are people out there who can do this, who are seeing the same way that I do, and they even earn their living by that. So that was really amazing. That was the first step in, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm connected. There is a connection out there in the world. And I'd like to go back uh, briefly again to the, the what happens with children, because I there's a theme in your writing of, uh, some of your institute graduates who work with children and a, a certain commonality of experience. And I had never heard or known anyone who was able to detect people being so ill they were about to pass. But you you speak specifically of uh, colors, seeing the colors of people's emotions. Mm -hmm. when you yes, were seeing, yes, seeing the colors of people's emotions, seeing colors like what I would um name now uh, a picture an image <laughs> yeah i wouldn't knew what it was that i saw stuck energy which would probably be like dark uh, dark gray or something yeah but for me it was just a color back then and, and the uh, oh excuse no, me no no go ahead <laughs> yeah and um if you want to know about the um um the alumni of my institute she's a head of a um um, uh, children's school, not children, but the first grade of school, you know, like when way they went from five to 10. <laughs> yeah, the little ones. And she was able to help lots of children who were like um, having behavioral issues, having health issues, having his issues at their home with the concept of energy being um, translated in, in, uh, in colors. That was very easy for the children to grasp because it's normal. It's just, it comes very easy to them. And you also uh, talk about the role of the imaginary friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I, I find it so funny when I read like studies, psychological studies about that because everybody confirms, yeah, children do have imaginary friends. And they also say like uh, children confirm or know that they are not real. And I don't think that they ask the right question. I think children know that you can't touch, that you can't touch those friends. But if you would ask in a different way, I was sure, I was pretty sure that she, not pretty, but I was definitely sure that she existed. The friend I had that gave me comfort 
that would reassure me when I was lost and when I felt sad. And then there's a concept too, growing out of this, of of having to unlearn what what you learn as a child, because I, I do think it is a very common experience uh, for children who are perceptive to get the really strong message that they're very inconvenient and they should shut up. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So there's a notion mm -hmm. of unlearning that, that you explore. Yeah. yeah, this is what the whole training is about, you know, because the name is a little bit, um, uh, not really a very good name in intuitive training because we are all intuitive. Every 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 human being has intuition. What we do tra train is, um, or we unlearn to think we don't have it. To unlearn um, being afraid of the punishment, yeah, for seeing and saying what I see, for being aware of what I am aware. Um, we unlearn the anxiety around being unmasked and being completely vulnerable. Because imagine like what if everybody on the whole planet would be intuitive again, like what would change? Some, it would be very different because why would one even try to lie or to manipulate? <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty different. So uh, that takes some effort to unlearn this fear that comes with the programming, it's not true. Um, I noticed that you have a very, very practical uh, approach. Not surprising, you're a very practical person, <laughs> uh, but a very practical approach to yes. uh, the whole concept. And you, you break uh, intuition down into categories that I think a lot of people uh, on my side of the Atlantic would not ordinarily uh, think of them as, I have a bunch of notes here. So you have a concept of spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. Spiritual authority. Yeah, that is, you can call it like seniority. That is what we call it. And um, is it really so uncommon? I, I thought it was very common. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, connect, yeah. it with, connect it with intuition is uncommon. Yeah, okay. Ah, yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, for me, intuition is uh, all about uh, spiritual authority as uh, the intuition to me is the voice of my soul. It's the voice of our souls. Um, and so it's um, the highest form of consciousness to be able to listen to my intuition. And uh, be, my own spiritual authority means like I am aware of what I know, even if I don't get it. And I trust myself and I believe myself in the process of getting what I know and being able to express it and not um, and not having the necessity to have lifelong teachers or believe in all the books that I read, all the teachers that I have or everything, but just trust in my own knowledge, even if I don't know why at one point. Mm -hmm. And you have many stories of people who do that or did that and everything ended up they might have been in a situation that presented as danger, but trusting in themselves, they survived it just fine. Yeah, lots of. I mean, there have been thousands of students in the last 20 years. <laughs> and um, definitely, I mean, like, there are amazing stories of like personal growth and healing and also like literally survival <laughs> yeah trusting their intuition and being able to survive through that but you even more oh, sorry no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah but even more but even more um yeah really like the personal growth being able to live their soul i mean like that is even more than survival to me to being able to live what you came here to be um because i think that is what it's very important to not only being aware of your intuition and what your soul is talking to you or how it talks to, talks to you, but to be able to live it, yeah, to put it in your daily life. There's a, a concept you have of uh, certainty, I think is how I translated it. Um, we'll see what we can. When you tell a story of uh, pitching a script and experiencing a lot of uh, negativity from the person on the other end and sinking into a point of calm yeah. and turning it around by not, by not being affected by 
uh, the barbs or the raised eyebrow that was coming at you. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a real skill. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you for bringing that up. I mean, that man really lost it and <laughs> bless him. <laughs> yeah. That man really lost it on me. And, um, uh, I mean, like, what would you do? And when you, when you propose a hard project and somebody that you are, that you are depending on is being very aggressive and invalidating towards you, it's, it's tough. Like, and I had some, worst case scenarios, but he topped them all. <laughs> yeah, he topped them all. So there was one moment of severe anxiety, but then I remembered my intuitive, intuitive tools and I could, you know, very easy, just ground myself, just ground myself. And of course, I mean, if I do it a few years grounding, it's a little bit different than when I do it for the first time, but that sense ability to see what his way of talking <laughs> let's put it like that was about and so i could just stay with myself and what i believed in and could even stay in the connection with him so that turned out good yeah i have heard a, a similar story from a, a friend of mine who uh, was abducted at gunpoint in her own home in the middle of the day and uh had a a bag put over her head and she was walked to a car and forced to go to her bank and go to the, there was a drive through teller, uh, automatic uh, ATM where you could withdraw money. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had taken Tai Chi and just got very, very, very still and did what they said. And as soon as she got to where the cars were in front of the bank, she just jumped out and started running and banging on car doors. And so I saved her life by doing that, but it was the certainty of, mm -hmm. all right, I'm not going to panic. I'm going to just move mm -hmm. into a place of deep calm here. Yeah. And you have, you have many, many tales like that. And yes. In mm -hmm. your book. Um, you have other, other ways that you have actually broken down the concept of intuition. Uh, one of them is perception, which I think is something that children automatically connect to. Yes, intuitive, um, intu intuitive perception is um, uh, functioning on, on different levels. Like you can, you, the, one of them is just, you just know stuff, you know, you just know stuff. You just know maybe that the uncle is lying, yeah, or that auntie is going to die, or that the pet is sick. You just know it. Mm, and uh, even you can see, um, do you see, it's not like with your eyes, maybe it's that our images that are similar, but you can see like um, with your third eye, one would say you, you really see imagery, sometimes like in a movie, <laughs> yeah, you can see what is going to happen or what has happened. Um, it can be all the other senses also uh, um, through which the, the intuition, uh, the soul speaks. And then it's um, it's a little tricky to distinct what you may be um, uh, um, uh, experienced as a person with the same sense and uh, distinguish that from what your soul is trying to tell you. That is a little tricky. That needs some training. But yeah, it's all those senses. And for the intuition, it's merely knowing. Yeah. And to be able to distinguish what is your perception and what you're picking up from other people um there's the concept of of keeping your of being aware of what's going on with your aura what's going on in your energy field yeah what's going on in your energy field what's going on in your aura what what might be um like really old triggers that you're not owning so far where you immediately um judge even maybe unconscious judge something yeah or somebody or a certain personality trait and that is not what the intuition tells you <laughs> it's just something in your personality that jumps on something yeah but you can also be affected by the energy of other people around you oh yeah yeah sure yeah definitely of course i mean like we everybody i think everybody has experienced that you are just like oh yeah i'm good it's a wonderful sunny day and you um somebody is calling you or you just go shopping 
and poof, <laughs> yeah, something is happening and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm, I feel depressed now or um, what is this anger that I'm feeling? Yeah, or you're going into, you're, you're pretty well and you're um, going into a room like a team meeting something and you feel very dense and that is energy from others, energy from spaces, yeah, um, that you even feel in your body. And it's with the intuitive training, it's pretty easy, simple, not easy, <laughs> simple, not easy, detecting. Mm -hmm. Detecting when, when there's something going on around you that you're picking up. Yes. Or also when the energy even came in your field, because that's happening all the time. And intuitive training is a lot about, um, yeah, being aware when energy approaches you or even merges with your own energy and then being able to just say, thank you. <laughs> there is something that you forgot in my space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Yeah. Take your choice with you. Yes. <laughs> um, what's the role of communication? Um, yeah, it's um, um, being able to communicate intuitive. You know, it it um, touches all the other aspect aspects that you that we were talking about so far now, and being able to communicate intuitive really means like being able to go to the essence, go to the essence of what's going on or of what you want to say. Yeah. And being able to, um, you know, in communication, there's very often, uh, it's very often like a little um, tricky because we all learn to communicate in different ways. And then maybe you just say something that would be normal in your family or in your culture, US, yeah, and I as a German, uh, I'm offended by that. What does she mean? Uh -huh. Like that, and with intuitive communication, you always looked on soul level, what do I want to say? And what is she saying or he, he's saying? And so it gets a little more complex, but at the same time, a lot more basic and easy. So it's more of the energy of the communication than the actual words it sounds like yeah um the, the actual words are important of course also and you have a tool to see through possible misunderstandings let's mm -hmm. let's put it like that there's a mercury yeah. retrograde tool for you right <laughs> there a very valuable <laughs> one. Oh, and speaking yeah. of words you have a concept of a spiritual hello can you talk oh, about yeah. that <laughs> yeah yeah, that is like, um, that is, a, it's not something that I invented. The hello is like from intuitive training, like for years and years and years that I picked up. Hello is, hello is uh, the spiritual hello is, um, I see you. I see you. I feel you. It's nothing to change. It's just un unconditional. I see you and I'm here with you. It's nothing that has to be optimized. I see you. So that is the energy. And you can use that for yourself. You can use that for your fellow humans. You can use that for animals who respond very well. Oh, yeah, I imagine they would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, also love and connection. You have that as a, a, uh, a sub part of intuition, which I don't think many of my colleagues would have thought of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, like, I mean, that is the, isn't it the most amazing part of being human, like connection, <laughs> like love and connection, like with, with other, with fellow humans or even with humanity. It's, uh, it's a tricky part of being a human and it's loaded with so much concepts of romance and family and friendship and also like cultural stuff and your intuition again enables you to get down to your real needs like not so much the um personal needs on a superficial level but the real needs like what is the sort of intimacy i want what is the sort of communication i need and it helps you to um connect really on a soul level and from there finding 
the connection on the human level uh, on a different way, with also with less understanding. Hmm. And I, I, it sounds like that would get around a lot of uh, the romanticizing that we have of the concept of love, uh, particularly from film. <laughs> and TV, there's these. Yeah, they, they, they nearly, yes, they mostly stop at the happy ending, right? There's a reason for that. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. It's really like, uh, you know, not a concept of soul flame or, or soul twin or something. I, I'm, it's okay, I, but I don't think we need that for a fulfilled relationship. It's really seeing each other on that level that gives you so much peace, you know, even in the worst conflict. And it gives you so much peace if you are able to see each other on that level again. Huh, very peaceful. <laughs> and it's a rare thing. Isn't it? It is a rare thing. And, and mm -hmm. you feel safe when you run into it, right? Yeah. The yes. child in you says, oh, I can, I can say what I'm seeing because you're not going to scream at me yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly mm -hmm. yeah well we are uh this sounds like a good place for us to take a break mm -hmm. so hang on everybody we have a lot more to talk about and uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes Om times tv want help with your own celestial compass Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, for Astro Insight forecasts for each week, month, and new and full moon. Want to explore the personal impact? Make a decision? Understand another person? <laughs> it is possible. Click the Services tab to book a personal session with me. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times. Open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. <laughs> We're talking today with Alexandra Zorgenicht, who is the uh, founder of the Institute for Intuition Training in Germany and the author of a new book on intuition coming out in April from um, by Goldman. It's a German language book. Uh, everyone pressured the publisher to get this thing into English because it's a very, very uh, useful and uh, practical breakdown of, of various components of intuition and ways that they fit just naturally into uh, into life. Um, let's you 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 invoke the concept of of God a lot or connect intuition to the divine. Can you expand on that? Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Thanks for asking about the topic of God, <laughs> the, the divine. It's like it's, I don't know if it's the same in the U.S., but in Germany, it's I often get oh, I spiritually spirituality is okay, but not God. <laughs> yeah, because and I think uh, 
it's very understandable because it's so much um, connected to hierarchies and to abuse of power. I mean, like that's overall in the world, um, like what's happening in the most established Christian churches um, speaks books, <laughs> yeah, to use a German uh, item. Um, in the name of God, so many horrible things have happened. So it's it's really an intuitive task to find your pure connection, to refine your pure connection, pure connection, and to be able to communicate with what you experience as a divine on on I height, you know, on an I height level. And like um, when the students in the institute for the first time experience. The divine like the highest existing frequency <laughs> i say yeah frequency or vibration um it, they very often really cry and and it's a because it's it's such a deeply moving and relieving experience after having been in resistance towards it for very good reasons for such a long time and having the feeling to be able to come home to this energy, which means coming home to themselves um, in a yeah, in a very comforting and easy way means a lot. Yeah. And bringing that back um, to you to your life is, is a huge benefit. Like what we were talking about certainty about reassurance about calmness really helps you. This is not about punishment or judging anything like that. It's really unconditional love. And that's so hard for people to extend to themselves. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's one of the hardest. It's one of the hardest things, you know, like so many people would rather love a guru who embodies that for them, makes it a little easier to, to, to project it on someone else than giving permission to oneself to feel it in yourself. And I think, yeah, it is not the easiest tasks it's simple not easy yeah and um but it's so worth it it's so worth it uh you end your book with a concept that ties into this that made me laugh out loud when i saw it which translates basically to your god so behave like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know like that was really my idea for my first idea for the title and to be honest because i was so fed up it's like 10 years ago and to really speak openly i was so fed up with the glossy kind of spiritual spirituality that got more and more <laughs> sold like um uh, I don't know, a weekend to enlightenment or um, I don't know, six weekends and you will have 600,000 per month on your account or something like that, you know. Um, and I was not, I was, I was, yeah, I think the anger or not, I know the anger came from, hey, this is so valuable. You know, we are, what is our species? Like, who are we? as humans, as in the intuitive humans that we are actually are. Who are we? Are we the ones who want to become richer and better and more glossy and stuff? Like being able to connect back to your divine is, I mean, it's bliss. And at the same time, it gives you a certain idea of why you are here. And with that comes a certain kind of responsibility, like for your life. And this like means it's not like, oh, I want to have all the abundance. I mean, look how much people we are in the world. It just doesn't work out <laughs> for everyone. So, yeah, it's very easy to, if you think it through. And, um, you know, like I'm, I was so fed up because capitalism always uh, yeah, takes in new concepts or new possibilities that are able to empower people. And capitalism has a tendency to just <laughs> eat <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so, I, yeah, I was like, no, don't just um, get your next car from God or from the universe or your, your, your business bliss or whatever. Yeah, really embody who you are. And that is, yeah, that is sometimes hard work and not 
not always bliss. Yeah, and the bliss comes from the work then. Sounds pretty German, I know. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, well, you know, you do have you do have one one story in your book, a testimonial of someone who uh, found a a fairly simple, in many people's view, existence that's ended to fulfill a tremendous need for other people. Your uh, student who uh, moved to an island in Greece where there's a, a community of Germans and she found what they missed most was German bread. And she's a baker uh, and a, like a patisserie chef or something. At any rate, so she found that making... German style bread for the community was something she could do and she could be in this magical, beautiful place. Uh, and I mean, who thinks, oh, I'm gonna go to, to was it Crete? Uh, I, I'm gonna go move to Crete and become a baker. Like, no, you don't think of that, but it just where, where she ended up and it ended up being fulfilling to her and serving other people. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was, you know, like, I mean, I, I work with so many people and um, there are once in a while, of course, there are stories that are particularly st touching, honestly, um, um, because you have a match with them or because they're just so amazing <laughs> in what they do. And she was um, like one of those. Uh, she, she came to me with Crete for a women's retreat. I do women's retreats on Crete and she was like, you know, she comes from a small town in Germany, hasn't been very like, didn't study or and anything, was in a very like small place, exact, like actually for her before. And she knew that she wanted to live there. <laughs> And it was uh, it was really like, and she didn't get it, but she knew it. And so she, it was a whole process, like two or three years. Of getting to the point where she knew that she needed yes. to move. Yes, and where she said, yeah, she knew it for a longer time, but then the moment she said, okay, it's now. I'm going to do everything now, and within a half a year, I will be in Crete. And so she was, she, not with many, many, much money, absolutely not but with beautiful people, supportive people there. And uh, yeah, just her feeling so connected to the earth and the ocean there. And um, so she got opportunities that she didn't have in Germany before. And she got a um, confirm confirmation of her self image, mm. of her true self image that she never got before. And that was there in that place where she intuitively knew she had to be like from the first moment on she set foot on that island she knew and she's baking bread yes <laughs> life <laughs> yeah um well that that kind of leads to uh, another uh sub topic you have under intuition which is trust oh yeah yeah you know like for trust huh? that's a big one as i mean like a lot of us are traumatized in the one or one or the way one way or the other and um so most of the humans i met are very good in having these genuine trusts that we need to have or should have getting from the first year the first three years of our life a lot of us have experienced interesting things in the first years three years of our lives and so this in, in, Germ in Germany, you would say Urvertrauen, like the genuine trust, um, do doesn't exist <laughs> for most of the people, I would say. And I have experienced that in the connection with, with my intuition and through that with the divine and my own divinity, there's a genuine trust that goes beyond the one that I could experience only on a body or personality level. It's beyond. It's also in the body and as a person, as a human being, but it goes beyond. It's like a very deep trust in me as a being on this planet, in this universe. And that whatever happens, I will breathe till I stop. It's, it's calm. 
I mean, of course, life does things, <laughs> yeah, a lot of things. And for me, it's possible to come. So you come into yourself into a place of calm is what I suspect, uh, since your camera has frozen for this moment. Oh, uh, yeah. Am I back? Can you You're hear back me? now, yes. Now. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. yes. It's like really consciously reconnecting myself to my divinity, to myself, to being that being on this wonderful planet, like having a bigger perspective and even feeling the bigger perspective um, than the situation that is maybe scary. That gives a lot of calmness and trust in life. And when you experience life from that position, it ultimately spills over into how you treat other people? Yeah, honestly, most of the time. <laughs> well, I mean, we're still human. Yes, you, you still get yes. a point. But what, this is making me, what this is making me think of is once I was doing volunteer training for um, for the AIDS Foundation in Houston during in the thick of the AIDS epidemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was in a room full of strangers. And one of the exercises they had us do was find another person, sit on the floor, and we had to stare into each other's eyes for 20 minutes mm -hmm. without talking, which was very hard. And by the end of it, I discovered that even though I had nothing consciously to say to the young man that I had been paired with, we just regarded each other with mm -hmm. a softness and gentleness for the rest of the training. Uh, because we had been staring into each other's souls. And I, you know, people aren't going to take the time to to do that, but I it seems to me that's a byproduct, a potential of the training that you're doing that oh, you yeah. connect yourself enough and then gradually you can, oh, wait a minute, God's walking around in the face of other people too. Hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's um like yeah, what I said, like I walk, I go shopping and maybe the cashier is very unfriendly and I see why, you know, I won't, I will never look deep because she didn't ask me, so I won't do it, but I see it. I see it and um, I try to be friendly. Yeah, whatever she does. Um, yeah, examples like that always see producer that was yelling at me. Like I saw his pain, yeah. And I know, I know how you can be full of rage when you're actually very afraid of something. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good Absolutely. cover, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, then there's also the notion of uh, will. And uh, so if you align, if you are, if you know yourself and you're acting in connection with your divinity, doesn't this change how you express will and power you have a concept of authority over or uh, mm -hmm. uh yeah right english word for it but yes <laughs> yeah the free will or the intuitive will um i mean like i love them all but this is one of my favorite actually because i don't know if you know but in the spiritual context somehow the third chakra can be a little if somebody's so much in the third chakra it can be a little tricky <laughs> let's put it like that because there is where it's our fire our will where we are able to get what we want you know um and i love it yeah i really love it the third chakra if if you're not judging yourself if you're not in fear you don't have to push other people on the side you know like to get what you want it's like um if you're aligned if you're in contact with your essence with your soul and um are able to distinguish from what you might want for compensation for something. But saying, this is really what I want, you know, like I wanted being an intuitive trainer. I didn't even know that I wanted, but I wanted it and I became it. And it was a very hard way very often. But if you want it like from that free will, like that is aligned with your soul, it's, you just go that way and it's not, it's not easy, you know, like it's uh, tough. There will be challenges, 
And because it's such a complete yes to yourself of who you are in essence, that is what the free or the intuitive will is, that you are in yes in uh, permission maybe to who you really are. It's, it's going to unfold in one way or the other, not tomorrow, <laughs> maybe, yeah, but it's going to unfold because you just do, you're doing who you, what you are, and that is always rewarding. It sounds so much more honest. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think it's pretty honest. It's, it's, uh, you know, we can't, like, I am not, I, I can't um, put my will out of my spirituality. I mean, why do I became human then after all? I think I became, I am human too, because I have an idea of what I want to experience here on this amazing planet, yeah, in that life. So why do cut out? Why do I have to cut out a part of that being human to become, yeah, who I am? That doesn't make sense to me. So the will is um, pretty crucial, I think. This, this doubles back into something that you alluded to and that you write about a lot, which is the notion of spiritual bypassing. Which oh. I, think, I think that's rampant in the, in the glossy spirituality industry that you talked about a minute ago. Um, yeah, yeah, spiritual bypassing. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty, how do you say? I mean, like, it's seductive. You know, it's so seductive, you know, like what we talked about before, like the bliss you experience when you're connected with the divine is, oh my, that's so wonderful. You know, it's just pure light. It's beauty. It's, and then you come back and you're sitting there and you don't like your legs or your butt or, or your paycheck. <laughs> yeah, and then you're, oh, I'm, go I'm going back there. <laughs> I'm going back there. And you forget to do act the way this energy invites you you know um and this is so important i mean it's such a blessing to be able to experience that energy even in your body and um if you make that enough and if you make that an escape ah oh, such a pity you know and even you will not heal you will not grow if you do it it's just an escape and that's a pity because you can if so to kind of wrap up uh mm -hmm. we have a little time left but to yeah. wrap up some of what you have been um, um discussing with us um well actually two things since you have uh, an international or a multinational uh, approach to a lot of things have you noticed any differences depending on the uh, the country that someone was raised in in how they approach the notion of intuition? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. For example, the U.S. <laughs> because yeah. a lot of a lot of my teachers are from the U.S. I have a lot of friends. Uh, um, I have a lot of friends in the U.S. Colleagues in the U.S. in the U.S. and um, um, and that is what I said. Maybe I sound German because uh, what I what I noticed is that the idea of yes, it's partly hard work. <laughs> uh, I haven't experienced so much in the U.S. For example, <laughs> I I did experience or hear um, the saying "It's simple, not easy" a lot also in the mm -hmm. U.S. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and you know, like why I also um, for me found it important to. Um, further develop what I have learned in intuitive training was for me, I thought if I think and still think, and I'm, it's very important to do body work, to do trauma work, to combine that into intuitive work because yeah, being an intuitive human, living an intuitive life is just becoming whole and we can be damn enlightened. <laughs> and if we have not worked on our traumas, we will get, a lot of maybe a lot of parts of our life will get beautiful but still there will be this one two three four five parts that we will get stuck and stay stuck so this is something that was for me very important to um, establish and like bring into that work and other cultures like when i think about polynesia for example i mean it's so beautiful how very often it is not blocked 
<laughs> in the people I was able to met there, who just came fluently and is just fluently a part of their life and has always been. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it struck me just in the little bit that we've discussed this previously before I read your book that mm -hmm. there are huge differences in approach. And I, I honestly have not run into anyone who had the um, orderly step-by-step -step system that I see yeah. that you have, which gives yeah. people a lot that, that, you know, their brain can hang on to and they can yeah. learn it in pieces uh, yeah. for, for someone who recognizes that they pick up information and maybe hasn't studied much. Do you have any kind of general advice for how to proceed? Um, you mean like for starting to get in touch with, with your intuition? Or how to develop it? I, I always tell people that the more you act on a hunch, the more your intuition will strengthen because you're sending it a message that you trust it. Mm -hmm. But that's a very yeah. simplistic way of looking at it. Yes. Yeah. Um, a very easy one is um, thinking consciously about when it worked out. When did it work out? Because we always, everybody has this, I just woke up and I knew I had to do it. Like you were thinking about that, like overthinking like three weeks <laughs> and then you wake up and you knew it. So um, think about that. And when you do make a decision next time or when you recognize something, remember that feeling in your body, how it felt when it worked out. Remember that feeling in your body, set a mark in your body. Also remember when it didn't work out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, when it was a gut feeling, which wasn't intuition, but something else. Remember that. What was the different? A difference. I think it's a good thing to really set markers in your body. Remember how do you feel bodily when you are intuitive and when you're not? And then just practice that feeling. And this might help you distinguish between the little voice. Your, your voice of anxiety or the actual voice of yes. your inner knowing. Yeah, it would be at least the first step, you know, like the voice that says all dogs are dangerous. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 And thank you for mentioning like all the steps. That was um, hard for me to really putting a real structure, putting it, put it in a real structure, putting it on human life. I had a very hard summer <laughs> last summer in, in having this mystic, actually like mystical space, putting down in, in words and in a structure that, um, yeah, that is so detailed. And I think could help if you come from a more rational or merely rational mm -hmm. uh, level to look at it and to start trusting it. Yeah, I found it really useful. Uh, anyone from your publisher listening to this, I think there's an audience for it in the English language. <laughs> I hope Get so. Get it into English. <laughs> and and those, of you, uh, those of you who out there who can, who can uh, muddle your way through German or actually really read it, I, I highly recommend it. Um, and your book again is called, the title of your book is? Intuition. <laughs> Intuition, wie du die Stimme deiner Seele stärkst und für ein selbstbestimmtes und freies Leben nutzt. Which is how you, how to strengthen your soul's voice and use it for a free and self-determined life. Uh, who doesn't want that? I mean, consciously, exactly. everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. Unconsciously, people are fighting it all the time. Um, <laughs> and so, where can people find you? Where can people find you online? Uh, they found me under my name, Alexandra Sorgenicht, uh, www.alexandrasorgenicht.com. Um, English will be only available, available from May on, like the website in English. And, but um, we have open events that are completely um, um, to bi bilingual. So if anyone is oh. interested, you can come to our open events if the time zone suits you <laughs> yeah and get an intuitive reading intuitive feeling or um get an info event anything that suits you you're welcome so you have online classes and online events yes and in addition I to going to, 
Are you going to uh, Crete again this year? Um, no, this year is uh, in the countryside where I live. Crete is next year. Next year, okay. And would the Crete event also be bilingual or is it just in German? Um, yeah, I'm planning it bilingual, also like the Hawaii retreat. I forgot that there was a retreat in Hawaii. Okay, and unfortunately, this is when you're you're freezing once again. So uh, <laughs> we're coming toward the end. I really, really appreciate you doing this, and I want everyone to understand. There's been simultaneous translating going on here the whole time. <laughs> so, yeah, I did my big, best. <laughs> big, big kudos to you. I really, really appreciate it, and I wish you great, great success uh, with your book. I know that it's a, a huge undertaking. And I hope you do nice things for yourself to acknowledge the work yeah. that you've done. <laughs> I do. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for this wonderful radio station. And thank you. Yeah. See you soon. Oh, I hope so. And one last thing. All right. that You have a Facebook group and there are postings in English in it. Yeah. Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So that'll be in the show notes. You can catch up with Alexandra mm -hmm. there. And again, my uh, information is always at empowermentunlimited.net and my forecasts are also double posted for the most part at Om Times where you'll find my Mercury retrograde guide that you want to consult now because yeah well anyway thanks very much for being here and um, see everybody again in a couple of weeks bye thank you Casey thank you <laughs>